it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of my die sets. This is die number 1028, the cake pop-up, and you can check out all of my designs at karenberniston.com. One of the very first dies I ever designed for my first collection with Sizzix back in 2009 was a three-tier cake pop-up die. It then ended up in the Stampin' Up! catalog as well for a while. And I always felt that while I love, love, loved that die, I wish I would have made the assembly a little easier, and now I get my do-over. In general, for assembly videos, I try to keep my project mostly around just the pieces that come in the die set. That's the way I like to design dies, that you can make a great card using just that set. But there are a couple great accessories that I did want to show. So there's the new Happy Birthday that's on this card, and the new number set that's on top of the cake. So this card is going to go to my mom this year. She's celebrating a big milestone birthday. I've placed the 10 dies that come in the set on my magnet sheet, and I'll start by cutting the three tiers of the cake. To make a cake, each one of these three tier pieces needs to be cut twice. Now you can try stacking up your cardstock and cutting through two layers, but I tend to just die cut one of each at a time. So it's two times through your die cutting machine to get two of each. You can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die, and I am using a Sizzix Big Shot today. Now you can cut those tiers out of a nice patterned paper. I would make sure that it's a little bit of a sturdy pattern paper, like a double sided. But if you're using cardstock and you want to use the stencil feature on the die to add some polka dots, that is another option. So in all cases, I will just sponge an ink down through that die all over the tiers of the cake, and then it will add polka dots in all the parts that are visible. You do not have to worry about stray ink. So if it gets off of your die and into the other parts of the cake, it doesn't matter. All of those parts will be hidden in the finished cake. And of course, anytime you use your dies as stencils, you should definitely have a rag handy that you can wipe that ink off of your die right afterwards. Now before we start folding, let's give ourselves a little help by adding X's to the pieces using a pen or a pencil. It will all get covered in the finished design where the adhesive is going to go. So we've got our big panel at the bottom and the side tab on the small tier. Again on the medium tier, the big panel at the bottom and the side tab. Just adding some X's to those pieces. This will also help because you won't accidentally flip your piece over then. You know, if you haven't done the polka dots, it, it's easy to flip a piece over and then suddenly you've got the tab on the wrong side or whatever. So just adding these X's really helps you. On the big tier, it's going to be the three across the bottom and the side tab, but then also the upper tab. So only for the bottom tier, the upper tab also gets an X. Step one, let's make sure that that center little tab is separated from the other two. Sometimes in the die cutting process, it might leave just a little bit connected, and if so, just break those connection points. And then let's work every single fold in this piece as a mountain fold. So a mountain fold means you're folding away from you. See, everything is being coming a mountain. The two outer ones are in a little bit different location than the inner one because it's going to fold down right here on another mountain fold, getting it out of the way. Right at the corners, there's another mountain fold. The X tab up here is a mountain fold. And then the sides of the cake. So we've got a mountain fold here, a mountain fold here, and the final one is the tab on the side. And notice every single fold is a mountain fold. The middle tier is basically the same thing, mountain folds. If there's any paper in the slot, get it out of there. We're just going to go around and find the folds and make them mountain folds. So you've got the side tiers, the side tab. Now the other tab, it doesn't have an X and it doesn't have a fold. See, that's just going to stay straight. Same folding on the upper tier. That X panel, mountain fold, it comes down around the crescent. The other side folds down. The sides of the cake, they each have a fold. You've got your side tab, but your other tab stays whole and it has no X. Now here's the only valley fold in the entire cake and it's to bring up your little crescent. So see, that's the only valley fold. Everything else will be a mountain fold. Now we need to do that again for the other three pieces. Now you can rewind this video and watch the slow version and do it with me. I'm just doing it really fast here to show you that those other pieces get folded the exact same way. 
So each one of these pieces is half of a tier of a cake. So you can see that when you put those large X panels next to each other, and then we end up gluing those to each other, that's what creates the full tier of our cake. So let's talk about adhesive. I definitely recommend something strong. My favorite for putting the cake together is glue. So I've got Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive filled in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. And the important thing about gluing the big X panels to each other is that we completely coat the panel with adhesive and especially all the way up to the top. So we're really trying to shellac these two to each other. We really don't want a gap between the pieces. If you're using glue, this might be a great opportunity to just throw a paper clip across it up to the fold so that you can really seal those together and then set it aside. While that dries, I'll move on to my middle tier. Once again, I'll start with a line of glue right up next to the fold and then pretty much coat the rest of it and then get that lined up with the other half. Now the reason that I'm being a stickler about getting the glue all the way up to the top is because we actually have another tier that's going to sit right over the top of that, that seam. So if that seam has a gap in it, then that tier above it might slide down into the gap and you won't get such a nice tall cake. So really important when you're gluing these tiers to each other that you just make sure that you go all the way up to the top of the fold with your adhesive. For the bottom tier, it's going to be the two outer X panels. So we've got that one that's in the middle and it's just kind of kicked out of the way. Once again, adhesive all the way up to the top of the fold, pretty much shellac it and then just attach it to the other side. Now this one, you know, my paper clip's not going to be long enough to go all the way across the whole thing. So I'm just going to hold this one for a second until the glue sets up. I'll still need my glue to finish the assembly of the cake, but I'm also going to recommend that you grab some just regular old tape. So this is some gift wrap tape. It could be just plain scotch tape, inexpensive cello tape, whatever you've got, just have that handy. So those side X tabs glue to the other side. You want the adhesive all over the little X tab. And then if it is easier, you can actually collapse this piece up into the closed position because then that will bring your X side tab over to the other side, making it easy for you to press those two pieces together. The only thing you have to watch is that when you do this in that collapsed position, you don't want to accidentally glue that X tab to the center of the cake. In other words, it's just gluing to the other side. That will become real evident because when you do this step like you're seeing me do, if you try to open it and the piece doesn't come up in the middle, that probably means that you got it some glue, you know, you got that middle piece kind of stuck in your tab somewhere. So that middle piece should be pretty free flowing. It can go up and it can go down. And then you've got your outer two tabs and those are the two that are going to go down through the slots of your middle tier. Now the way I designed this, there is just an itty bitty tiny little catch on the edges. So when you shove this through that slot, it's gonna be tight, okay? See how it's tight in there? And usually what you want to do is you want to start at one side and get it all the way down until it kind of clicks and then shove the other side through and it should be pretty tight. Now what happens sometimes is in the shoving through the slot you've actually kind of bent those outer little catch points a little. So if you just take your fingers and just kind of rub them back out again if you can imagine those kind of got shoved in and then you can shove them back out again. Depending on your cardstock that might be enough. Feel it. Does it feel pretty tight? It's probably fine. But I'm going to give you a cool little trick here that you can do during assembly just to make sure that that tier can't ever pop out of there. So I give you this trick because I don't know what weight cardstock you're using and I don't want to have to dictate what you use. I want you to be able to use anything. So this is the trick. You take some just regular old tape and back here where you've put your tab through the slot on either side, but it's probably easier on the outside, you just add a little bit of piece of tape across the tab and onto the middle tier. See, just like that. So basically what we're saying is, okay, that tab can't come back out again. That's all that tape is doing. You don't need much, just a little line of tape on the inside of the middle tier connecting to the tab that's come through it. And that will just really make sure that that can't ever pull back out of those slots again. Okay, let's continue on with the assembly. It's going to look very familiar. We're going to do to the middle tier exactly what we did to the top tier, which is we add adhesive in the X panel and we glue it to the other side. 
and you are welcome to collapse that down if you find it easier to do this in the collapsed position where you can really get those pieces together and pinch them. If you wanted to use a double-sided tape for this, you could. I'm using glue just because it's easy. I love glue, but you could definitely use like a strong tape for this if you prefer. Now we've got our upper and our middle tier connected to each other. This is going to look familiar now because on the middle tier, you've got a center piece that pushes everything up and then you've got two outer tabs and it's the two outer tabs that are going through the slots on the bottom tier. So we're doing exactly the same process again. I think the easiest is to get one corner of the tab all the way through and then push and pull until the other one goes all the way through. And once again, just go in there with your finger and your thumb and make sure you pull those little catch points back out again. It should feel really tight. As an added bit of insurance, it's a great time to add that piece of tape. It only takes a second, and then you know for sure that that tab can't pull back out again. And then go to the other side and do the same thing. So we just get a corner down through the slot until it kind of catches. Then we push and pull the other side of the tab through until it's seated in there. Work those little corners a bit to make sure they're back out again. Check it, make sure it feels tight, and then add the tape. There really is nothing at all complicated about this assembly. It takes a little longer than some of the other ones because of course you're stacking three tiers of a cake up into a really impressive card. But overall, all the steps themselves are actually quite simple and intuitive. We're gonna add the adhesive on our X tabs. Basically, we're just doing the same thing. That's the other nice thing about the cake is it's three repetitions of the same thing. Adding our adhesive on our little X tabs and connecting them to the other side of the cake. And now you can see all three tiers are stacked together. The last thing we have to do is to create the base for the cake to sit on. And that's what our final two X tabs are for. They basically just glue to each other. So I just add a little glue in one of the X's and glue the other tab to it. And once again, if you find it easier, you can collapse the cake down so that you can give it a good press in the closed position. So we're just attaching X to X on both sides of the cake and that will create the little base that the cake will sit on. I think it's easiest to decorate the cake before I put it in the card. And so I have this little trick I like to do if my cake is kind of collapsing on me and I want to keep it open. Then I just take a piece of cardstock and weave it through the cake basically along the bottom tier just because it's easiest to see what I'm doing but it would work in the middle tier as well and then just weave it right through. And then what that does is it just kind of helps the cake stay open while I'm doing some decorating, like if I want to put my little trim pieces on. And I used glitter paper with some double-sided adhesive on the back for my trim pieces. That'll make it easy to add them to the cake. I usually start in the center and then wrap the ends around the cake. I'll need one for the front and one for the back. And then once I've got my pieces just set on there, then I can actually pull the cardstock so that I can collapse the cake and then just reinforce them with a bone folder. The die set includes mirror image candles so that you can glue those back to back around that top part of the cake, or it also includes a bride and groom. So you've got two cake topper choices with the die set, but then as an add-on set, you can buy the numbers set. So I've decided to use the numbers on top of the cake. There is an optional stencil feature on the numbers that will give it a little highlighting line around the outside. And if you'd like to use that stencil feature, I recommend using temporary tape to hold the dies onto a little bit larger piece of cardstock. That way you have that cardstock to hold on to while you do your stenciling and then die cut it afterwards. Notice on the zero that I'm not going to use the stencil on the vertical pieces, just on the rounded pieces. And that way I can complete that stencil after die cutting. Okay, I've run that through my die cutting machine. You can see the seven there with that highlighting line. And then on the zero, I just need to finish out those little bits. Whatever I put on the top of the cake has to be able to collapse down into that small tier. So if I'm doing a two digit number like 70, I'm gonna have to overlap those pieces a little bit. But then if I want the number sign, I can put that just a little higher. So the goal here is, is to have the 70 collapse down into the cake, but the number sign is high enough that it shouldn't be in the way, even in the closed position. So just watch that with whatever you put on the cake, the top of the cake. It either has to be high enough that it can collapse down and your topper is still above the cake, 
See what I mean? Or it has to be thin enough that it can collapse down into the cake. But a two digit number will fit. You choose your own card size. I'm going to do a standard A2, five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock, folded in the middle at four and a quarter, and then I decorated mine with some pretty pieces of pattern paper. The cake is going to glue down on those two X panels, so I can add glue all over one set of them. In this case, I chose the back of the cake. It wouldn't really matter as long as I pay attention. I want my 70 facing the front. So I just need to make sure that I don't cross the fold with my center pieces. So I like to kind of lift the card up to make sure that those stay right in the fold, but not crossing the fold. And then once I get a good alignment, I feel like it's centered, then I'm going to give some pressure right over the top of that X, because that's where the glue is underneath the cake on the other side. So just giving it a good press. Once I feel like that's set up, then I can go ahead and add my glue to this side. So again, it's the X panel that gets the glue. It can be all of the X panel, basically the square one and the little tab one. All of that area can get glue or your strong tape, whichever. And then just close the card and give it a really good press. And then once it's set up, you can open that card and your cake is going to pop up. The cake trim pieces can be used for so much more than just trimming the cake. For one, they make a pretty good cake plate. By just taking the longest one and snipping it nearly through, but not all the way through, every third scallop, then you can create a nice little trim to go around the bottom of the cake actually on the card. And you can use those cake trims to trim out the entire interior of the card if you'd like, as I did here. Okay, I've used the new Happy Birthday cut twice and offset just a little bit. I'm going to glue that in the back. And then one of those birthday candles from the set along with a label and a heart from the Catherine label set to finish out my card's interior. And then my favorite thing, just a simple lead in for the front of the card. So candles from the set, the cake trims, the little oval and heart from the Catherine label, and my leftover pattern paper. Okay, right now that cake wants to spring back up, but of course after you've got it trapped in an envelope and sent it through the mail, it'll remember how to stay closed. But then you also may have to teach it how to stay open. So it's got three layers of fold stacked on top of each other. So as you can imagine, when that gets folded down and mailed, it's gonna take a little while before it's willing to just stand perfectly flat on its own. Now you can see it does a pretty good job on its own, but depending on how thick your cardstock was, it may want to kind of close up a little bit. So if you really wanna keep it nice and open flat for display, you can just put a paper clip across the fold and that does a really good job of immediately making it stay open for display. And actually, after about an hour or so, you could take that paper clip off and that card will stay exactly where it is right now. So it's all about sort of remembering what it wants to do. If you mailed it with a clip, they could actually just rotate that clip over and across the fold just like that for display. You can have more trim choices by getting the cake trims die, which is sold separately. It can also be used for standalone borders. And then of course it has three different trim styles to fit the cake. Those also work great to make wedding cakes. And let me quickly show a few ideas by our very talented design team. Fran Sabad with a heart on top of the cake. Helen Cryer with a beautiful wedding cake. Karen Aiken with three different styles of pattern paper on the cake. Shelly Hickox on the left, and I love her idea to add a decorated clip and Kelly Booth on the right incorporating some of her stamps. Summerhill's painter with just two tiers on the cake and some palm trees on the left, and then Helen Cryer on the right with a beautiful floral birthday cake. The cake pop-up will start shipping February 1st, 2018. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can find out information about purchasing these dies as well as links to all my other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.